Hey guys, it's me again, Ryan J. Owens, owner of the Lee Volley, uh, ex-athlete, played for a U.S. national team. We're going to have on Melina Terrell today. She's been with us for uh, six years, and currently she's the leading scorer in France. Um, Want to talk a little bit about her pro experience and what's going on with all of that. So, let's see. Hopefully the network will be better. It's tough. She's in a village in France, which is beautiful, but it can be okay. rough. How you doing? Good. I think we're better. Much yeah. better. All right, cool. So in one sentence or less, how would you describe yourself? Okay, let's try this again. I am a globe-trotting, nomadic, living, active, athletic, hungry, happy, exciting, joyful, Human being with an inner feline personality. <laughs> you are so similar with your one sentence answer, but I love how you just hyphenated it all. Name, age, position. Okay, my name is Melina Terrell. I'm 27 years old. I am 178 centimeters tall, about 5'10". Position. Um... I'm a universal volleyball player. I've done it all across the board, middle uh, to outside hitter to opposite to now receiver slash op. Yeah, I'm a volleyball player. I'm an attacker. Put it like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, where are you from? I was born in Berkeley, California, which is in the northern part of California, the Bay Area. Most people have to understand it as the San Francisco Bay Area, but I was raised in Richmond. Richwood! I had to throw it in there. I had to rep my city. So. <laughs> College and pro teams with the country and level until now. So I went to the University of San Francisco, which is a Division I uh, school in the West Coast Conference um, from 2010 to 2014. I played two years uh, sand volleyball at USF as well. That was uh, the second year that they added sand volleyball to the college teams. Um, then my first year pro, 2014-15, uh, I played in Denmark in their uh, first league. Then my second season from 2015-16 was in Germany in the first league for Navarro Straubing. Sorry, in Denmark, the name of the team was Fortuna Odens. Um after my season in Germany, I went and played for the end of the season around playoff time in Puerto Rico for uh, Indias Mayagüez. Then for 2016-17, I played in Orpo, which is a, a team in the top league of Finland. Then I went back to Finland and played for a different team, uh, Pelku Kuzumo, for 2017-18. Then 2018-19, um, I played for the Bézier Angels, and that is where I am again this year. What's your two-season vision from now? Uh, two-season meaning my French right. Championship oh. and Challenge, Challenge Cup. Um, this year, my the objective is to help lead this team to the finals. To the end of the season, I want to be the last team playing I want to play in a finals game because I've never, I've never done that in my whole volleyball career. I've never played for a gold, except for uh, in Finland for the uh, Finnish Cup. And um, in Challenge Cup, I want us to go all the way as well. Those are my goals that I have for, like, the team. And for my personal goal is to be the best player in France. All right. And into next year? The two seasons, so. Oh, into next year is to be playing uh, on a Champions League team. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what's the difference between league and Euro Cup matches? So, league matches, I mean, um, you play each team two times, and uh, but the Euro Cup matches, the thing, the difference between that is there's definitely a a difference in the level you could be playing you know in challenge cup for example you could be playing a team from maybe a, a league like luxembourg which isn't isn't really so high or you could be playing the third place team in italy 
which is still top tier and super high level. And the importance of playing for a European Cup team is you get that exposure, that international exposure that you're not going to get by just playing in your league, in your country. Get that international exposure is, is huge. Yeah. Uh, why did you choose your team now and how is it going? think we froze so hopefully she'll come back in a second bear with us why did you choose this team and how is it going um a second season in Bézier I think was just a really good career move uh it was the first time that I got offered to come not the first time but the first opportunity to be with the same team a second season and where I really felt like I could grow with a team, with a coach, with the community here. And on top of that, playing in France uh, for multiple years is definitely uh, one of my goals. And so seizing that opportunity was really important for me. And um, yeah, the, the way that they wanted to form the team for this season, it just was the perfect fit. And I know that like I was like a, a puzzle piece in creating uh, the team for this season. So uh, it felt it just felt right. And how's it going? How's it going? Sorry, could you repeat that? The connection went out just a little bit. So far, it's going pretty good. Um, there's definitely, there's always going to be those bumps in the roads. But um, if I can compare, like, where I'm at right now to where I was a couple of years ago in, like, Germany, where I you know, wasn't really there mentally or physically. Um, I feel like I'm a different, I'm just a different player. I'm a different person. Um, I'm more focused on being consistent and present and in the moment. And it's going good so far. We're doing uh, really well right now. Uh, we just beat the top team in the league just last weekend. And that was really uh, huge for us to continue and finish out the rest of the year. I'm sorry? Match MVP. What was that, 31 Yeah, points? that felt great. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's expected from you as a pro by your team? My role this year is to kill the ball, score as much as I can, get as many aces as I can, bring my fire and personality to the court, have a, have a real presence you know, on the court, you know, being, having a presence and leading a team doesn't mean you have to be a captain. You know, those are, those are, those are labels and stuff like that. And I think, yeah, that's what I bring. I bring Molina. I bring power. I bring excitement and joy and uh, points. And I know that that's, that's what my role on this team is this year. And how is pro different than your college experience in, in terms of level and arrangements, blah, blah, blah. Well, what most of the time you can be sure about in college ball is, you know, things are secure. You know, you're, um, you've got people helping you with balancing your man time, uh, time management with school classes and, you know, you're fed and all that. Whereas, like, when it comes to going into the professional world of volleyball or in sports in general, there's nothing guaranteed. You could lose your job in a split second if you're not doing what you need to do. And then if you try to go at it alone without having an agent and you think you kind of can do it by yourself or whatever, um, it's not things aren't always going to go your way or what you think is mm -hmm. going to happen. So that's where it comes into play of like you, you know, gaining the information that you need to gain when it comes to getting an agent and all of that. Whereas in college, you don't worry about that for four years. You're just going to school. You're taking, you're taking care of, you're going to class and you're playing volleyball or your sport or whatever in the pro world. It's your job. And if you don't perform, you could possibly get fired. Don't get paid. Or, you know, a team just doesn't handle their organization. Well, you can end up in a crappy flat or whatever. And if you don't have a good manager, then, they're not really going to take care of that stuff for you. So things are kind of less secure and you kind of, you got to grow up and you got to be ready to take care of yourself. 
Exactly. And you've got to be patient through that process of actually growing up while in a new team in a completely new environment, different languages, different systems, different people, nothing you know from before. And you've got to realize that you're not going to have those links. You're not going to have the things to lean on in those anchors. And you're going to have to make a bunch of those anchors within yourself. I think that's a huge thing that you've done over these six years. And I'm beyond proud. It's <laughs> incredible what you've done. So uh, what's Elite Volley Fam to you? You came up with that name. And why did you choose us? I know you came up with it. Now that <laughs> thinking that I stole it. So Elite Volley, well, of course, is the agency that, you know, you founded. This is your organization. But it's a, a community. Uh, it consists of um, a couple of agents, rookie, uh, rookie professional volleyball players, um, current pros, seasoned pros, uh, girls that are looking to go play in the States, mentors. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're a family that's – we're all working towards the same thing, which is um, – how to be the best volleyball players that we can be, but also how does that transfer into, you know, life after uh, volleyball? And uh, we're all here to just kind of help each other, help each other grow, and which is nice about, you know, we have a group chat that we're all in and uh, stuff like that. So it's just, it's a nice little secure community, but, you know, you're open to helping other people join that uh, train if they want to buy into our system and uh, our philosophy. Yeah. And you're talking about basically about like what I do with mentorship on the side beyond athletic and our elite volley job listers, which are not represented players, but we try to help them anyway. So um, right. why is your agent important and what do we do for you as an athlete and a business person? Because you're now as an athlete, you're literally a business. Sorry, I missed the first half of that. Why is your agent important? Uh huh. And oh, what why is well? Do for you as an athlete and as a business person. Uh well, again, a lot of the things that athletes, there's a lot of stuff that I just don't want to have to deal with. <laughs> uh, whether it's contractual things, salary stuff, um, other financial things, or anything on the business side, like I don't have that kind of knowledge the way you do, because that's something that you learned about, you educated yourself about, and uh, we don't know everything. So that's why it is important to have you guys to take care of those things, whether it's diplomatic stuff or whether it's just something that uh, is wrong with our house, our car, or uh, anything. Like you really make sure to take care of that stuff. And, um, and also, you've done a good job with trying, again, trying to help prep us for life after volleyball when it comes to us, you know, eventually transitioning into the real business world and what we can do um, and how do we uh, transfer our knowledge that we've learned from you into our later lives after volleyball. From me and from the mentors that we try to have in our, our Absolutely. Um, what do I expect from you? We're, we're towards the end here, last third. What do I expect from you as a player for our relationship to work so I can do my job well and you can do your job well? Trust, <laughs> loyalty, um, commitment, and just the, the hunger to want to be better and the hunger to want to continue to further educate ourselves um, not just for right now, but also for the future after volleyball is over because it ain't forever. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, how does it work with me as a, or how is it to work with me as a player and be honest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be honest, it's definitely been a journey. It's been a journey. And I think you and I have come a long way and we've learned to balance our, uh, our personal relationship as well as our agent player relationship uh, so that it's a healthy one. And that's really important. And that does take work. You know, we've had our, we've had our times, we've had our bumps in the road where we've bumped heads and I'm not ashamed to say that, but I know it's because you saw a lot of potential in me and you saw that, you know, me being the, the Guinea pig of the elite volley uh, fam and everything like you saw that, um, I could turn into something great and which you, you felt 
you which felt. I did feel that I definitely felt that and you know when you feel that you can't just turn away from that and it's like when you have that kind of support you don't turn your back on that kind of support so it's like you bought in and I bought in and we're just continuing to go up yeah so tell me uh what do you like or respect or actually sorry how do you like or use uh, Elite's projects, so combines, whatever, and me? How do you personally use that? I've been to one of the combines already in Belgrade, which is great just because that was a time where I was really trying to hone in and transition into having the mindset of an opposite. And you, that was your position, and you have knowledge, you know, in what how, what it means to be an opposite. So it's like, it's important to put yourself in uh, the position to get better. There's a quote that I saw the other day. If you're the smartest in the room, you're in the wrong room. So <laughs> you need to consistently surround yourself with people that have been in your shoes, that have done what you've done, and that are beyond that so that you can learn from them. And so um, in that sense, yes. And then not just that, but in other ways, in nutrition and social health and emotional health and stuff like that. Um, I know that we've had some great talks just because, again, you've been here before. You've been in my shoes already. So maybe there are some things that you would have done differently that you can help me not to make that same mistake. So it's like, why wouldn't I utilize that? And that's you, that's other mentors like Therese and stuff like that. So um, I'm grateful for that. And it's really well. you just mentioned, so it's it's about this up and down, right? I have those same people in my life. Therese is also one of my mentors, even though she's a close friend, but I have other people who I rely on so that they are the smartest people in the room so that I can take that knowledge and then share it with my network. So I like that. Uh, what are common mistakes? Last two questions, two parts for this first one. What are common mistakes you hear that rookie pros make when they're looking for an agent? Or some are usually looking at the offer first, actually. But you get it. Yeah, I mean, well, just over the years, hearing a lot of different horror stories, a lot of these girls are promised the world, and they just gravitate towards that. And it's like, you know, they're just kind of – it's difficult for them to always figure out what's genuine and maybe what's fake because most agents are just there to get their pay cut. After all, this is a business – and they don't necessarily, right, right off the bat, they don't understand how big of a competitive dog-eat-dog volleyball world this really is, even within the agents and the volleyball players and all of that, um, because most of them can really give a, a rat's butt about your personal life or about what happens to you um, during your volleyball journey, whether you get screwed by a club, whether you know you have a crappy living situation, whether you don't get your money, to them, a lot of that is not their problem. And so, um, yeah, I think rookies, they don't, they don't do enough research on uh, the different – enough research on, you know, reaching out to seasoned pros. Like, hey, did you work with this agent? How was it with him? Whether it was – you know, whether – how was your personal relationship, but how was your business relationship with him? Did Very he take care of you? Were you secure? Yes. Two sides to that. Thank you for saying that. There's Some – there's, there, there's two sides. Yes, but the business is what matters. Personal yeah, does and I mean... No, but there's two. Keep going, sorry. There, definitely, I mean, no, I'm just saying, like, you may not, like, okay, we have our relationship, and, you know, not every agent-player relationship is going to be like that, where, where, like, we actually, you know, we actually have a friendship, whereas, like, some people just want to keep it business, and that's okay. It's okay to have just a business relationship with your agent, but it needs to be an honest business, you know, uh, relationship. And not everybody knows how to decipher through that and recognize uh, what's real, what's not, what's genuine, what's professional, what's not, and what's going to get you screwed and what won't. <laughs> Advice on what they could be asking or what they can be thinking when they approach these agents. Um. Again, definitely, like I said, like reach out to players, players that know those agents on a on a on a both a business level and a personal level. That's going to be different, um, and seeing where those agents have placed certain players and find out 
information about those teams and stuff like that. It's just research, 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 and ask your agent questions. Yes. Don't be yeah. afraid to ask questions. Okay. And what's the biggest mistake you, you see with or hear about players making when they choose jobs right out of college? Uh, well, the thing is, a lot of, again, money, money talks loud and clear. So, of course, like, you know, that's going to gravitate, you know, uh, that, that gravitational pool is going to be strong. But it's like, you know, an agent will be able to, like, getting an agent that knows the that knows the leagues, knows the level, and knows your level, you have to be able to trust that they're going to try and put you where you fit in, and you are not going to always know where you fit in at that given time. Like, you may feel you're at your best level, your top level in college, but it's a different ball game out here. It's, it's completely different. And, um, yeah, so there are a lot of mistakes in the just kind of jumping on that first job just because the paycheck looks good, but it's like, the paycheck looks good, but are you going to be happy there? Are you gonna is, is are you gonna be able to handle that type of coaching, that type of living, that type of culture? Expect I know expectations. For example, there are some cultures where you know women are secondary in society. There are not a lot of girls that would even enjoy being in that kind of environment. But is it worth getting paid four thousand dollars, five thousand, six thousand a month? Like. You have to kind of decide what um, what kind of gain you want from it. Is it only monetary gain, or do you want to actually enjoy your life there? Do you actually want to grow, take the time to grow? Because sometimes maybe it's better to, you know, maybe take a lower pay, but know you're going to be taken care of, secure, and grow, and then eventually that will come later. So patience. It's all right. about steps. Strategy, yes. Yeah. Vision and strategy, very important. Strategy. So the last question I'm not going to ask because you just answered it. So thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to add before we say bye? Um, <laughs> I hope that this was informative. I hope that anybody that was watching, I hope that you can gain something uh, from this because I can say that coming up before even I knew that I wanted to go pro, like I didn't really know who I could talk to or – I didn't have mentors at that time, not when it came to going and turning myself into a professional volleyball player. So do your research. Um, reach out to as many people as possible that are maybe a, a higher ranking than you, maybe that have been there, done that. Um, do as much as you can when it comes to that because there's always going to be somebody that knows more than you. Don't assume that you know it all because there's always something more to learn, not just – you know you but the ryan there's more that you can still learn even oh. as a seasoned uh uh athlete yourself um ask questions research uh rookies keep your video ready and handy <laughs> you know it from day one <laughs> After day, i'm just gonna add to that to make sure that you know out of all of this, and when you get all of this input from different players, don't just ask those players you know. Ask those players that you're scared to reach out to. Ask those Olympians. Do not stay within your bubble because for the rest of your career, if you decide to go pro, you better get comfortable with being uncomfortable and always push that limit, okay? Always push the limit. Always get differing opinions. Then you make decisions. Never get just what you want to hear. And always know that from people like me and hopefully from people like Melita, she's learned also, you've got to take hard, hard, hard things in a softer way. You've got to be able to step back. The moment you hear something that's tough to take, to wrap your head around, take it, ask for time, digest it, then come back. That's my best advice. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. You're amazing. Sorry, that wasn't advice for oh. you. No, I give it that. <laughs> I was proud of you. She was like, okay. <laughs> Good luck this weekend. Who do you play? We play Mujan tomorrow. Awesome. Good luck. All the best. Merci beaucoup. De rien.